In this video, I will show you how to create a countdown timer GUI in Roblox Studio. It is very easy. Before beginning, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to support the channel for more game development videos. Let's jump in. I am creating a new project with the base plate template. Saving it to Roblox, let's call it countdown. The reason I saved it to Roblox is that I want to use some images for the UI. To do so, we need to save the project to Roblox because images are saved to the cloud. Now I will create the UI. Select Starter GUI and create a Screen GUI. Then create a frame. This will be our main frame. I'll set the anchor point to 0.5 because I want to set its position based on its center. Here I'll set the scale of X to 0.5. 0.5 is the center of the screen and since we set the anchor to 0.5, it sits at the center of the screen now. For the Y scale, I type 0.1. I want it to be just a bit lower than the top edge. I will add the UI aspect ratio constraint and I want it to be set to 1, so I want it square shaped. I change its aspect type to scale with parent size and I'll use height for the dominant axis. Now I'll change the size values of the mainframe. X is not important since I selected height as the dominant axis, so I can set it to all zero. For Y scale, I'll type 0.1, just because it looks good to me as a countdown timer size. Under the mainframe, I'll create four image labels. I'll call the first one background one. I'll set its size scales as one and zero out the offsets, so it fills all the space. I'll duplicate this three times. The second one will be background two. The third one will be foreground 1 and the last one will be foreground 2. Now let's talk about how we'll make this countdown effect happen. We'll use the index values a lot. The index determines the order in which a GUI renders to the screen relative to other GUIs. Elements with lower Z index values are rendered first and elements with higher values are rendered on top of them. For the first half of the countdown effect, we'll use the layout you see here. I have spread out the half circles a bit to give you a better idea of how they will be layered. As you can see, we have two red half circles, background 1 and background 2, and two green half circles, foreground 1 and foreground 2. Background 1 will have a Z index value of 2. Foreground 1 will have a Z index value of 3. We'll use 4 for background 2 and 5 for foreground 2. So foreground 1 will be the one that's visible on the left side of the circle and foreground 2 will be visible on the right side of the circle. At the start, we will only see two green half circles as you see on the right under combined effect. As the time progresses, we'll rotate foreground 2. When I play the animation here, foreground 2 rotates and we can see the first half of the animation here under combined effect. Now we have three half circles on the left side and one half circle on the right side. In the second half, we still want to rotate foreground 2, but first we need to make some adjustments in Z index values. We'll update foreground 1's Z index as 1, so it goes behind background 1. And we'll update the rotated foreground 2's Z index as 3, so it becomes the uppermost half circle on the left side. The trick here is background 2's Z index is 4, so it will be rendered as the overall uppermost layer. When we keep rotating foreground 2, it will slide behind background 2 and reveal background 1 behind it as it rotates. Let's see how the animation looks for the second half. As you can see, we end up with two red half circles indicating that the time is up. At this point, if we want to restart the timer, we will go back to the initial layout and set the Z index values accordingly. 3 for foreground 1 and 5 for foreground 2 and we'll keep doing the same thing over and over to create this rotating countdown timer effect. Let's go back to Roblox Studio and set the Z index values accordingly. Background 1 will have 2, foreground 1 will have 3, background 2 will have 4, and foreground 2 will have 5. These are our starting Z index values. We'll change these through script during gameplay. Now let's assign some textures to these. I'll use simple solid colored half circles. For background 1, I'll use a left half circle, red colored. For background 2, I'll use a right half circle, again red colored. For foreground 1, I'll use a left half circle, green colored. And for foreground 2, I'll use a right half circle, green colored. I want to get rid of the borders and backgrounds of all these. I select them all, set border size pixel to 0, and background transparency to 1. As you can see, there's an annoying line in the middle. That is because of resampling mode. To fix that, I select all four images, go to resample mode and change it to pixelated. 
Now the middle line has gone, but our images look really jagged around the perimeter. To hide that, I'll add a ring image on top. I'll create another image label and I'll add my ring image to that. Let's get rid of the border and background transparency first. It doesn't look that aligned though, does it? Let's increase its Z index so that it is rendered on top. I have used 6, any higher value would also work. I'll change its anchor point to 0.5 so that it is measured from the center. And I'll set its position scales to 0.5 in both X and Y, no offsets. For the size, I'll get rid of the offset values and put in 1.1 for both X and Y. I have used a value slightly greater than 1 to sweep the pixelation around the perimeter under the rock. Let's rename it as ring. I want to add a text to my timer to show the remaining time. Let's add a text label to the main frame for that. And let's call it timer text. Similarly, I set the border as 0 and background transparency as 1. I'll change its anchor point as 0.5 and its position scales to 0.5 with no offsets in X and Y so that it is centered. I'll increase its Z index to 6. I'll set its size scales as 0.5 with no offsets in X and Y. As a placeholder, I'll type X here. I'll scale the text so that it fills inside the whole text label area. We are done with our setup. For the animation, as I mentioned, I'll rotate this foreground too. Let me rotate it manually first to show you the animation. Say 10 degrees, 50 degrees, 60, 90 degrees, you got the picture. At the start, it will be 0 degrees and we'll rotate it with script. Let's create that script. I select local script, rename it as timer. Here I'll create some references. I'll start with the main frame. It will be script.parent.mainframe. I'll also create references for the two backgrounds and two foregrounds. Local BG1 is mainframe.background1. I'll copy and paste it and update for background2. I'll copy and paste both and update them for foreground1 and foreground2. Then I'll create a reference for the timer text. Local timer text is equal to mainframe.timer text. I'll create two variables here. The first one will be total time. I want the total time to be 5 seconds for this example. I'll also keep track of the time passed. Let's initialize it as 0. I'll update the UI at every frame. So I'll use the run service. Local run service will be game colon get service run service. And I'll use the heartbeat event, which is called on every frame after physics simulations. I'll connect to that event with a function called update UI. I'll create that function now. Local function update UI, as an argument, it will fill in data time automatically, and I'll use that information to update the time passed by typing time pass plus equal data time. Data time holds the duration that has passed since the previous frame. I'll create another variable called normal time for making the calculations later on independent of total time. Normal time will start from 0 and go to 1 when time passed reaches total time. So I can calculate it with time passed divided by total time. I want it to be between 0 and 1, so I'll clamp it between 0 and 1. If it is less than 0, it will be 0. If it is greater than 1, it will be 1. As we have discussed, there are two different configurations for the first and the second half of the countdown animation. I need to keep track of that. Let's create a local variable called isFirstHalf and initialize it to true because at the beginning it will be the first half. We should check it based on normal time and update accordingly. So if is first half is true and if normal time is greater than 0.5, then we'll switch to the second half by setting is first half to false. I'll also write the opposite of that for resetting the timer when it ends. If not is first half and normal time is less than 0.5, I'll set is first half to true. We also need to change the z index values based on if it is the first half or not. So for the second half, fg1.zindex will be 1 and fg2.zindex will be 3. For the first half, fg1.zindex will be 3 and fg2.zindex will be 5. Now we need to rotate foreground 2. So fg2.rotation is equal to normal time times 360. Because normal time is from 0 to 1 and the rotation value will change from 0 to 360. So we multiply these two. Now comes the fun part. Let's see if it is working. It works great. Let's go back and add the text. For the text, I'll type timer text is equal to. We want to display the remaining time. To calculate the remaining time, I'll type total time minus total time times normal time. As you remember, normal time represents the past time in a normalized form. 
So if we multiply it by total time and subtract it from the total time, we would find the remaining time. It is a floating point value, so I'll use mat.ceiling and put these inside parentheses. Mat.ceiling will give us a rounded up integer value of the floating point. Let's see. It looks good. 3, 2, 1 and 0. Now let's have it restart when it reaches the end. Let's create an if statement. If normal time is equal to 1, which means it is the end of the timer, I'll update time pass as 0, so the timer starts again. Let's play. It counts down and it started again from the beginning. We can easily change the total time. Let's make it 3 and it will count down from 3 seconds. One last thing I'll show you is how to update the background textures. Instead of the solid colored background one texture, I'll use a radial gradient half circle, like this. For background two, I'll use the other half of the circle, again with a radial gradient. When I press play, you can see that it looks fancier. The radial gradient gives it a smooth transition effect. So this is how you can create a countdown timer GUI in Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to support the channel for more videos. If you want a new game development tutorial, let me know down in the comments. You can get access to the Roblox project file from Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.